Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Hey, today is Friday and I always tell you on Fridays, get everything over this weekend. Get everything from Monday, listing and listing and listing and just get blessed. They're all there on YouTube. If you're not, if you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do. Because you can find all the messages there. And listening and listening and listening and just get blessed, get built up. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Can we make requests for our daily bread? Are you ready? Say with me, Father, I demand right now from you, my daily bread is coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hey, God so loves you. He wants to do everything. To make you happy. Jesus said, fear not, little flock. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Now, I was sharing something yesterday. You know, some people say, does God, does God need you to give something before he gives you something? Hey, yes. There's no other way to make it plain to you. Yes. Everyone who has worked with God will tell you the same story. See, leave people who are not working with God. Leave people who are just reading Bible and trying to explain to people. Everyone, I told you the other day, is the is people who are doing the practical. People who are in the field, they are the ones that you should listen to their stories. Don't listen to the stories of the lecturer in class. Tell you, you know, I was teaching the other day and somebody asked me this question. And I, uh-uh, <laughs> yes sir, yes sir. When you get to the field, that's when you begin to learn. Listen to people who are in the field. Listen to people who are practicing this thing. They will tell you. They will tell you the truth. My life changed when God told me to give something. You see, because I said, but, but does God need our money? Does God need? No, he doesn't need your money. But people on the earth need your money. So, why does God tell me to give? Does he tell you to raise it up to heaven and, 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 and a cloud will swallow it? He tells you to give it to people. Don't you understand? He's getting you involved in a system that works. What did Jesus tell that rich young leader? Go and get, sell everything you have. Give to the poor. Give to the poor. Give to people. Don't you get it? That all God is doing is to get the blessing around. That's his biggest headache. Yes, that's God's biggest problem. So once somebody comes, I'm, oh God, I'm ready to obey you. You'll be shocked. Oh God will tell him, give something. I'm telling you, give something. Yeah. Have you ever wondered why? Why is it? Why does God always want us to give? Why does God want, always want us to give? Because there are many poor people in the world. Hey, why didn't He tell me to go and give it to the poor? You see, you don't get it, do you? Do you know the poor people God is looking at? You don't know. So why? That's why it's important you obey the instruction God is giving to you. Hey, I don't like giving to the rich. Don't give to the rich. You don't have to give to the rich. And so who should I give? Ask God who you should give to. And let me warn you. He can tell you to give to the rich. (laughs) He can tell you to give to the one who has. You don't know the purpose. You don't know. That's why I tell you. The safest place is to be in the place where you hear him. You see, what you hear him do, it's the safest place. Because see, you, 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 God tells you to give your money to someone. You're looking at that, oh, that person, the money is not his problem now. How much is my money? 100,000. That person is a billionaire. How can God tell me to give my 100,000 to a billionaire? Ah, ah, I'd rather go give to the poor. Go and give to the poor. You'll be the one that will still end in frustration. And you know, now people sometimes come up with this idea that, God is telling you to give to a billionaire because when you give to a blessed person, you too, you will bless. Not necessarily. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. 
Because there are people who have given, given, given. They are still broke. In fact, they are out of business. They, 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 they are suffering more. The simple principle is this. Whatever God tells you to do. That is the key. The key is did God tell you to do it? So God can tell you to give to the rich. God can tell you to give to the poor. The most important thing is what did he tell you to do? But you see, for anybody to tell you that God does not require anything to bless you, the person is telling you academics. Academically speaking, he has blessed you. Yes. The Bible says he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Yes. That's academics. When I mean academics, it is written. Go to the field. Where is the blessing? No, show, the, show us the blessing. No, you see, the blessing is in the heavenly. Okay, we'll keep it there. When you get to heaven, you'll receive it. Those that are hungry on the earth, those that want to see things, they come to the field. When you come to the field, then you meet the real instructions. That's what I'm telling you. Father, you said you have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Yes, yes, I said so. Did you lie? No, I did not lie. Why am I not enjoying the blessing? He'll be quiet. You want to do academic exercise? He'll be quiet. You will shout and shout. Then after I finish shouting, you become broken. Oh God, have mercy on me. I want to see your power. I want to see your blessing. I want to see. Now when you're broken, Father, tell me what to do. <laughs> and a lot of the day, all those clothes in your wardrobe, go and give it to so so and so. Give it out. Give it to this one. Give it to this one. Okay. No, I'm asking you for more. I said, he'll be quiet. When you make up your mind to obey. You see, I don't know who else. You see, God. Like I was telling you, not because he needs them. But because he's bringing you into the system of giving and receiving. The same measure you give is the same measure you receive. It's a system of God on the earth. In heaven, he has given you everything. You don't need anything. He doesn't need anything. You see, you were born rich. Yes, you were born rich. But you see, in the practicality of it, this is just how it works. So now you begin to obey God. You give. And then you receive. And like I said, the same way you obey God, the same way other people obey God concerning you. Then you begin to realize this thing works differently. Uh -huh. And you're probing now, like, why did I have to give? I've noticed that any time God wants to lift me higher, he tells me to give something bigger. But, but the scripture says, so all those people that are deceiving you, they are doing academics with you. They are not being practical with you. I'm telling you the truth. Listen to people who are doing, who are practically living the word. Not people who are just preaching the word. There's a difference between a preacher and the one who's living it. The one who's living it have more experience to tell you about it. When I mean experience, don't, don't, not, I was preaching the other day and, and somebody, uh, somebody heard my message and, and the person, no, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about practical in their own lives. Look at a man's life. How does he do the things he does? That should teach you a lot. Find out. Find out. How does, he, how does he handle his life? How does he pay his bills? How does he do all those things? Find and look closely. Look closely. And if they will be sincere with you, because sometimes even preachers are ashamed to say they depend on God. 
Yeah, there are, there are preachers who are ashamed. They say we depend on God, though. but when you say, tell us practically, you know, they'll try to, they'll try to make, tell you something that you can reason with. I trust in God. I trust in God. That's it. So how, how does your trust in God? God speaks to people and they give to me. And I hear, so, so you see that you just sit down and wait for God to speak to people to give to him. Eh, eh. God speaks to me and I give to people. God speaks to me and I obey him where people are concerned. That's the work I do. So I can just be saying, God says, God says, God says give this. Sometimes very amazing. <laughs> you know, recently I went to a certain shop. And when I was leaving the car, I took cash and I deliberately left my wallet. And I just took cash. And then there was this sack, this trash in the car. So in the front of the shop, I saw this bin. You know, so I was like, oh, let me just empty this trash. So I went, emptied the trash, went into the shop, bought what, what I wanted to buy. By the time I got to the counter, I couldn't find my money. Ah, I said, no, I remember taking this money out of the car. I remembered. And, and so what happened? Ah, oh, ah, no, nobody could have picked my pocket inside this shop. You understand? I was just like, ah, what's going on there? So I told the cashier, I said, please, uh, just keep this aside tight. Let me get money from the car. Just keep this aside. So I went, I went to the car. I checked like, yeah, I took the money. And, uh, okay, so what happened? Well, I was wondering what happened. I raised my hand and I saw that trash. I'm like, hold on. Ah, don't tell me. I said, no. How? So I went there, opened the trash. Hey, look at my money inside. <laughs> the trash me. Yay. So I'm like, oh, what do I do now? So I looked around. And I saw this security guy. I called him. I said, please come. I said, come. I mistakenly threw my cash inside this place. I opened it. I saw it. I said, yay. I said, can you help me pick it? And then the guy picked it. And as he was handing it over to me, I heard the word of the Lord. So split it into two and give him half. Now, on a normal day, you know, you want to be appreciative, see. But the Lord says, split the money into two and give him half. So I did exactly that. I gave him half. And the half I had actually paid, could pay for what, uh, what I came to buy. So the guy was very excited. He was very happy. You know? And he was thinking in his mind, ah, this big man could not pick money. So, yeah, you know. So I went in. And why came out, paid and came out? And I was not thinking like, it's strange for me to, throw cash away like that. I was just meditating on the whole thing. Like, but how did that really happen? How, how did I mix up the cash with the... It was changed to me. Then the word of the Lord came to me. Now, when I tell you the word of the Lord came to me, believe me, it came to me. That's why I'm sharing it with you because the word of God is connected to it. Then the word of the Lord came to me and said, it's because of that security man that that happened. I said, okay. So I said, Lord, eh, but that's not right. That's not nice now. So why do I have to throw my money inside trash can? You could have just simply told me, see that security man over there. Then the Lord asked me, nothing would have connected you with the security man. <laughs> so meaning the Lord was, he knows me now. See, he knows me. So the Lord was simply telling me that, if I had told you to give money to that security man, you start trying to think, how much should I give to him? Why should I give to him? Do you understand? He knows me. Now, there are situations he has commanded me to give to strangers, right? but there must be a connection. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. And also, you know, the security man, you just call the randoms, come, take. They will be happy. Well, you know, the world we live in also. So we'll be thinking, hey, I hope this man have not used me to do sacrifice. He has <laughs> out of the blues like that. It's different if they help you pack your car or do something and then you say, take what? Well, this one was just on his own. So the Lord said, I wanted to get something to that man. I said, oh, Lord, I understand. He said, that's his way. But then he has commanded, I could have said, eh, what is it? Eh, after all, ah, 
Uh, let me just give you something small. Now say split it into two. I did. You see, it's the obedience of that command. Now, tomorrow, if somebody receives a big money and the Lord commands him, split that money into two and give half to Pastor Two. If you think I'm living my life depending on people to give to me. No, you see, that's how people reason things wrongly. There are some of us that won't say we live depending on God. Here is how we depend on God. We depend on instructions from him. He tells us what to do next. And so we live our lives obeying him. And because we obey him, now it's a fact that there are people on earth that obey God. It is the same thing. There are people, as I obey him, he commands others to obey me. To obey where I'm concerned, that's what I'm saying. I pray the Lord give you understanding. I pray the Lord give you understanding. Because, you see, these are practical things. And, and if you want your life to be beyond, you know, there, there are some of you, goodness, goodbye. All you live on is what you earn. If you want to go beyond that, I'm telling you, it comes by obedience. Obedience to what he tells you to do. Now, to some is give money. So it's not just because I gave money. That's a, ah, there are times the Lord says, go and see, go and visit and so person. So don't think this thing is only financially related. Sometimes in the night you wake you up. I want you to pray for so so person. Oh Lord, there are in those times difficult situation. to pray for someone who has offended you. Someone who not even listening to you. And then you just hear a tap from the Lord says, Pray for this person now. Father, that person. See, you know, so I, I'm telling you the truth. Sometimes pray for who? That one. Lord, just give me the instruction. I'll call him and tell him. I say, No, no, pray. <laughs> And then you, you, you want to praise. The flash of this personality just causes your mind. Say, ah, this person. Me pray for you. You're on your knees, oh. Okay, Lord. But then it rings in, but the Lord says, pray. The Lord says, pray. Then you remember, it's only by the help of the Holy Spirit. And you're supposed to depend on the Holy Spirit. So you go, Lord. I pray for this soul. I pray for this person. The heart is still there. The annoyance is still there. You're doubling with all that. Like, Lord, I release my faith in you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray for this person. Then there's a fire. Suddenly you see yourself ascend out of yourself. And then you now enter the ministry of an intercessor. Then love begins to flow in your heart concerning that. This is the practical. It's not the academics now. <laughs> love begins to flow. Then sometimes... It, it, the awareness of the danger that person is facing begins to come on you. You know, people don't know how we intercede for people. And, and, and funny enough, you finish all that, you don't say a word to that person. No. Some people don't know the battle we fight for them in the night. They don't know. They don't know. You say no. Especially when people are very close to you. They don't know. There are times you, you, you go through challenges with them, uh, for them. You see them, how are you? Did you sleep well? Ah, I slept like a baby. You smile. Because <laughs> when you want to start explaining, even the person may not even believe you. So keep it to yourself. You did it unto the Lord. And the Lord is the one who will reward you. So keep, it's even better you keep it to yourself. And just be smiling. And sometimes people say, Hi, Pastor, I'm going through this challenge. I'm going to say, mm, Okay, it is well. Don't worry, it will be fine. You see that statement, it will be fine. You meant it. But they don't know the labor you go through just to say to them, it will be fine. 
And the labor is not the labor you choose. The Lord brings it to you. So the Lord wakes you up in the night. Rekebaya. Rako. You spend one hour praying for one person. Because it happens sometimes you finish praying like that. And in the daytime, the person calls you and says, Pastor, I don't know. I just feel you should pray for me. I said, okay. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless you. And Lord, take care of this person in Jesus' name. Amen. I feel good. Just like that. Uh, Pastor, that, that prayer doesn't look powerful. No? We've done the real thing when the Holy Ghost brought it. This one is just you. You want to hear prayer. Okay, we pray. We, we can actually say, don't worry, you don't need prayers. But see, if you say you don't need prayers, they'll, they'll leave you and start going around looking for who will pray for them. And they'll fall to the wrong. They just say, and sometimes, you know, people like drama. The real work is done when the Holy Ghost brings it. And when the Holy Ghost will be praying for a person like a madman. You'll be pissing in your face. You're a victim. you you see yourself like, like you're fighting your bad. And the people are sleeping. That's the work of the ministry. That's the work of an intercessor. You finish, clean your face, clean your eyes, come out. Hello, praise God. And that's the life. And when God rewards, He rewards big time. Get involved with God's work. Get involved with everything that will make you obey God. And then you will see and know. You, see, you will continue with Him and then you will know the truth. And liberty and freedom comes. Praise <laughs> God. My time is up. Father, I bless you. Everyone listening to me, I pray for you that God will draft you into his labor. And then you will begin to receive the reward of the labor in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have the best weekend ever. See you on Monday. Bye.